part cow, part mountain goat. This is the reason why we wanted to have highlands in our herd. We've got uh, a farm that has a lot of very steep hills that are heavily wooded. And can't really get equipment. Very difficult to cut on. Very difficult to remove. Everything wants to go downhill. And these are, when we're saying hills, we're talking about, you know, at least 45 degrees in most places. And close to 100 feet tall. So... We need to have critters that can access this area, which is, I mean, on most of the farms around here, it goes essentially unused, kind of like a wildlife or riparian zone. So as we can slowly open up areas on the hillsides, the more we open up, the more these cows will access. They'll hang out on these hillsides and slowly convert it to pasture. He eating on, he's eating on an ash, I think. Yeah, and even though there's not a lot of grass here, they do eat the leaves off of the trees. They sure do like apple leaves and ash leaves, maple leaves. And we do have a lot of wild cherry. And uh, you've got to be worried about that, apparently. Most people fear the cherry amongst their herd of cows because it has cyanide in it. And I'm sure if you, maybe, maybe if you continuously graze them or something, if they don't have free choice, if they don't have free choice, then they might end up eating more cherry leaves than they maybe ought to. But when you have a free choice food plot and you're moving them and keeping it fresh and growing, then they only eat it when they need it. I think it was, I don't know if it was Sepp Holzer movie or in the books but he talked about how you know every year the vet comes around check his animals for worms parasites things like that and he's always got healthy animals and he doesn't use any of the you know wormers any kind of conventional wormer or parasite treatment it's just the plants that are available to the animals, like his foxglove, like the lupine, I'm sure the cherries, that the toxic plants in moderation turn out to be medicine. And the animals will self-medicate as needed. And he said that he, he could see that when he would turn them into another pasture, new pasture, 
you know, so maybe some of the ones that were looking under the weather, a little sickly, would go and, you know, nibble on something poisonous, like a foxglove or a lupine. Or... I know foxglove's a special case. It's very, very toxic. Apparently, the, the younger the leaf, the more toxicity. And uh, they say, uh, you eat that, you're in big trouble. And it, stop your heart. But uh, maybe in moderation or something, the animals know what they need. Whatever parasite they might be ailing from, their body will tell them to hanker for a certain taste and they'll go after that just as much as they need. Seems to be working here. We've brought animals in that have had parasite problems and we don't do anything other than feed them ash and diatomaceous earth. Ash out of our wood burner. Nothing special. And it's got, you know, charcoal and everything in it. There's the little guy. And the parasites go away and clear up. No wormers or anything. Of course, you don't want to use wormers because then the worms don't utilize that valuable resource you're giving them through the animals. They don't process the manure. Now here's a spot they're trailing up, making a trail up this pathway. This is an old skitter trail. This is the kind of access with machinery you have down here. So you need some pretty capable machinery to get down here. I brought a tractor down one of these things last year and I tell you what, I don't think I'm gonna do that again. So maybe they won't trail, maybe they won't, you know, create this erosion here. I'm doing something wrong here. So if there were more paths up or it was wider open and they didn't have to walk single file like sand people, then they might be able to stop doing that. You don't want to create any more of that. At the same time, I don't have four or five days to devote to carving out the side of a hill. So we're just gonna do the best we can with this. The boss. Boy, last year these cows were real wary of the lowlands. We're obviously down in the lowlands in the floodplain area. That's his first calf right there. That's out of black cow. That, that cow. Boy, she looks so good this year. Here's number five. Number five has a pretty positive that's number five. Number five and number 10 are like identical twins. It's a matter of which ear is the tag in and I can never remember. Most interesting thing that's happened today. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Good boy. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Good boy. You got it. You got it. There will be none of that. Now y'all are trying to get me into trouble. Bunch around the hawthorns. 
rutted out part of the bank, I wouldn't have a whole lot of places to go. This is number 10, Barra. She is yet to calve. This is our last first year heifer. an ash tree. Those compound leaves like that, sometimes I think they're elderberries. I meant to show you I was standing next to an elderberry. Maybe they're ash, I don't know. I can't tell at this point. We do have ash, not many ash. We do have ash. But we have a lot more elderberry. That looks... I don't know what that looks like. It's either an elderberry or an ash. I reckon that's an ash tree. But I don't know. Here we go. Cows can graze hillsides. Right? Boy, how wonderful that would be. Have a nice hillside. I'm gonna come see what you folks are all about. Yeah. Yeah. Good girl. Good condition this year. Yeah, it sounded like Jurassic Park from up front here today. They were bellowing so loud. Thought I wanted to come back and see what all the hubbub was about. Not a, not a bad way to have Saturday morning coffee. Now, it's time to get to work. Gotta get chores done. Pigs, sheep, chickens, turkeys. Cows are done. And then, gotta finish building our chickshaw. Eggmobile chickshaw. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we have to build Two more uh, broiler shelters. We kind of stole that one from uh, Justin Rhodes. Really would love to have wheels and have my brooder shelter look just like his if he's still running that flat top. I thought that was such a great idea. I think he cherry picked that from a woman out west and then kind of tinkered with it. Came up with something dynamite. So, we built one, our version, and uh, we're going to build two more. Got to move the broilers. Got to be able to move everybody. Got to move the broilers out. And then the baby turkeys have to come out of the brooder. And over into stage two, a stationary kind of pen. We let them get a little bit bigger, and then out on pasture they go. So, got to get that, get those built, and then Heather comes back from market at about 2 o'clock, and then we have to go on a, about a two-hour trip to get lambs. I think it's five lambs we're picking up today. We get to go and see James and Janan again and pick up some of their wonderful lambs. Run those for the season. I think two weathers and three ewes. We really like their ewes, want to keep the ewes and just send all our weathers to market. And we just 
went and got more weathers four more weathers we bought just to fill demand all of a sudden people want lamb that's great all right so chores chickshaw broiler shelters uh lambs chores again six things right something like that chores again and try and give the kids as much time off today as possible Giddy up. 